Continuing assignment two, our creature collage. It's been a while since we've worked on it, so let's review what the process was so far. Inspired by the silhouette of a fantasy creature we have in mind, right? So we took inspiration from some Pokemon. It can be a combination of them. From that, we sketch our own idea first, combining certain things, right? Whether it's mythological, whether it's absurd, and from that anatomy sketch, we understand the angle of the reference that we're looking for. So I'm going to combine these two Pokemon in my inspiration. And I wanted to do something that was a little bit kind of harder edged looking. Not, but still cute. And cat like, kitten like. So I was thinking like chameleon head, giraffe horns, panda mouth, cat eyes, chipmunk back, squirrel tail, you know, on and on. I found my high res resolution reference, at least 1000 pixels in the smallest dimension. I used Pixabay to find all of it because that's the highest quality wildlife reference you can find without having to, uh, to search through a lot of bad examples in Google images. And I spent quite a bit of time over the last six videos putting those head pieces together, seeing them together, adjusting the direct adjustments, things like levels, color balance, in rare cases, hue saturation, and layering them up to, to get a very believable head, even though that head is made of multiple components, right? Once you have that, we can start to map it onto the body and start to bring in some of these other references. So in order to do that, I'm going to open up our program, our freeware program version of Photoshop, which is photop.com. And I'm going to find the file I saved on my computer or on my flash drive. And it's going to be the PSD. It's right here. I'll usually mark it green. Make sure that it is named with your name and some description. And then I simply drag that in to the website of Photop. And now whenever I save it, it will update right where I moved it from. So you are encouraged not to move it directly from your flash drive or from your thumb drive. You want it saved onto your desktop and then moved from there. So it saves onto your desktop. That will save a lot of time and that will make it so there's not as much processing lag with Photop. Because we're asking a lot of it here. You also want to have programs that you don't need open to be closed, right? Just to, to give as much processing power to your Photop browser as possible. So in this case, I'm gonna close Photoshop from my other course section, because that takes up a ton of memory. All right. Now let's see what we've got. So at the end of the, the last video, I grouped the head into a folder. By putting it into a folder group, it allows me to move the whole thing together. I can do auto select folder. And though there are still things that need to be cut out from the head, it shows me how it would map onto the body. And once I've done that, I was able to, to use the crop tool and shrink some of that working space. I'll continue that. I'll crop it a little bit more to get a little bit closer to our creature's size though we still need some space to place and adjust the body, now we really know where that body's gonna go. Okay, and anytime you make a change, especially when you save memory like that, it's good to hit Command S to save your work. Or you can go to File, Save. And then it's gonna update right where you left it. So one way I can see that it's updating is, if you remember at the beginning, I marked this with green. And then when I make a change, like I crop it a little bit to save some space, some memory. And then I hit Command S or I go to File, Save. Boom, the green's no longer there. It just, it is updating that file instead of making lots of copies. The next thing I'm going to do is turn off my background, my background sketch. So I just have that gray. 
And I'm going to finish cutting out this head so that when I seam body elements underneath it, because my head for my pose is closer to the viewer than the body is, it will be nice and clean. So this is where tablets really come in handy. I'm going to open up my head layer. I have lots of layers kind of turned off, like these different eyes. At this point, I'm going to make the executive decision not to keep any layers that I'm not actually using. I can always save it as a different Photoshop file if I want those options for later. But I don't need these chunks of the chameleon anymore. I, I really went with more cat mixed with red panda mixed with giraffe to get this result. And I still have the chameleon underneath, which might be interesting to use. We will see. But the first thing I'm going to do is go from that furthest layer back in the head and use a 100% eraser. And I'm going to use it with a soft edged. So a large soft edged eraser at 100%. and take out kind of that chameleon part that's showing there. The next layer is this kitten layer. And what I can do is if I wanted to blend that into the chameleon, I'm going to take that soft edge 100% eraser, click on the kitten, and just bite away at that hard edge to start blending it so that, that hard edge is completely gone. That's why you use 100% at the start. Next, I can always create my own hard edge too by using my lasso and kind of defining a different edge. And right now I have a zero feather, so that's going to be really, really sharp. Which doesn't really make sense for fur. So if I want to soften that, I'm going to use the magic wand, select the space outside of my kitten, like that. And now my feather, I can set it to whatever I want for the magic wand. I'll set it to actually four pixels at this resolution. And now, because I have that feather on, when I hit delete, it's going to bite away at, wait at, a bite away at it like it's rippling from four pixels. So you see how that softens it as I go. And that's nice for like a soft texture like fur. I maybe don't want a feather quite so much for something like scales, a harder surface. Then I have the mouth of the red panda. I did a lot of internal blending last class. I can continue that here with the same 100% soft edged eraser. Get rid of these, whoops, wrong layer. It can only affect the layer you're on. Start blending it a little bit. There we go. Does the trick. And then if you need to blend it more, you can then, once you've gotten rid of the hard edge, go to a much lower opacity. Usually I go to around 40. And then just subtly blend. And this way, the different colors kind of blend together. And I don't think I want quite that much. I'm going to go back. Maybe I just want 20% opacity. Blend it very slightly here, just so there's a little bit of light fur at the edge. This can also be a time, we'll just review quickly, where you can use some of these direct adjustment tools. Not direct adjustments, but just direct tools, like the burn tool, or in this case, the sponge tool. Soft edge, large brush but not saturate, set to desaturate and make it pressure sensitive. Because that yellow was a little strong. Now, 
I just desaturated at a flow of 100%. I usually like to do it less than 20. So you can really control it. Otherwise, it can move pretty fast. All right. Now, that's the internal edge of the panda. That all seems pretty, pretty good. Maybe I want to erase it a little bit on this side. You know, kind of bring that edge down. It just depends how much overlap you have in your elements, right? And now I have this outer edge of it that I need to start blending. So again, with 100% opacity, soft edge brush. With, I need to keep remembering to check that that's on. With my pressure sensitivity for my tablet. So the harder I press, the more it radiates out. I get rid of that hard edge. So that it has the chance to blend into something around it. Then I see that there's all this green on this red panda layer. So how can I start to get rid of that? I can use my magic wand. I can uncheck contiguous, click on the green. So the green isn't from that layer. I'm going to deselect, click on this green, and you see it will select this green everywhere in the image. So I don't want to just hit delete because it might erase it from my fur or places I need similar pixels. But I know that I don't want the green out where these whiskers are. I just want those kind of white pixels. So I have a whole lot selected. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that selection as a mask. I'm going to hold down shift and add these darker greens to it. There we go. And I don't want to delete from all of this. So instead, I'm just going to use my eraser, leave that selection active, make sure it's at 100%, and then just delete from around the, the whiskers. And it, there's a slight feather there. I'm not going to keep all the whiskers. but it's going to give me that kind of soft edge that I want. So that's using it as a mask. Again, it won't delete anything from in here because I don't want to do that. Okay. So those are the kind of whiskers I'm going to have. I can now use it, deselected, and trim those whiskers up to just what I want to keep. I don't want to have to animate a lot of individual whiskers. So I'm going to tighten those up quite a bit. I also don't want all this dark fur. So once I've softened that edge completely, now I can go in, use lower opacity, around 40, and start transitioning it. Now, I don't know that I'm going to do black fur right to white fur. That's a little extreme. But this is the way you can do it. So it's going to have to do with whatever my body elements are of the creature. Okay, other elements I need to clean up on the head. So I've just got, got the white ears I want to use. i got to clean up around them. So I'm going to start with selecting the empty space around them with a 4 pixel feather because this is soft fur. So I'm using the magic wand with contiguous. Just 
should select around this for me. 